Welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here. Today is Friday, July 16th, 2021, and today we're going to be discussing this 2022 midterm forecast, which shows some pretty shocking results. In this forecast, we see a projection that the Republican Party will gain two governor's mansions nationwide. You know, when I first saw this forecast, I was, what's going on? What? Why do they say this? Um, and I started looking at it, and I think this is actually a very interesting forecast and, to see, and the projections that they make. Th these are not necessarily the projections I would make, but at the end of the day, I do find them interesting. So, before we get started with the video, though, I want to remember you guys to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. And I also want to remind you that channel memberships are now open if you do want to become um, a channel member. With that being said, I also wanted to, to give a shout out to our gold channel member, David Maxwell. So shout out to you. Um, and yeah, now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get started with the video. So this gubernatorial um, forecast shows the places, you know, where the, the, they think are going to be the closest races. One, you have Arizona. This is definitely going to be a close race. Um, you, you have Kimberly Yee and Katie Hobbs running in that race gonna be close wisconsin you know it, it's gonna be tony evers against an unknown republican at this point and again with pretty i mean I, I think i agree with this that they give the democrats a bigger chance now these are the two races i was somewhat stumbled but pennsylvania is the most i don't really see a very big as big of a clear path for the Democrats or for the Republicans in Pennsylvania, as the forecast is giving them, this forecast is giving Pennsylvania 57% chance of going Republican. This is not to say that the Republicans definitely um, don't have presence in Pennsylvania because they certainly do. Now, to the point where they have a, a 10, 14, almost 15% more likely than the Democrats, I think it's certainly a lot closer. In Kansas, that's another close race. Laura Kelly against pretty much any other Republican that runs. I mean, she's going to be one of those um, politicians that's really going to be impacted for her second term just because of how she ran against someone who was easier to be at the first time around. And that means that time is going to catch up with her and she's probably going to get, um, you know, voted out. And finally, you have the state of Nevada, 58 of 42. Again, pretty, I, I agree with this. I mean, the Democrats do have a big control over the state. So, what I really think here is that we're seeing with the projections they have, they see the Democrats plus one or minus one and the Republicans plus one. You know, this map actually, I mean, we also have to think about about this. Governor mansions, they really don't have as big of an impact nationwide. However, I think that if anything, we've seen that governor's mansions could really help you out in scenarios like elections and, um, you know, setting up that agenda. You know, I think that in the past, many nationwide, the nationwide parties, they did not want to invest a lot of money into these races because at the end of the day, politically in Washington, it was not going to have as big of an impact. However, I think that one of the things that has happened is, you know, governors with COVID, with the whole election thing, the they've actually gained a lot of power, which is really going to be important for them. You know, and for these state, for these nationwide parties, it's going to be important for them to, you know, have that control uh, in states across the nation. So that's going to be important. So I wanted to take a look at the governor's map they have on this forecast. This is the race to whitehouse.com forecast and seeing some of the races that, you know, the important races. So, you know, there's some races here that I'm not surprised. You know, you have, you know, Florida, Ron DeSantis, you know, doing exceptionally well. They expect him to win by 10 points. Again, I think that's a little bit exaggerated, especially against someone like Charlie Chris, but I think that Ron DeSantis could still win. You know, states like Texas, this could actually get closer with Matthew McConaughey running. Um, you know, that's going to be an interesting take to watch. Iowa, Kim Reynolds, I mean, I think she's going to do a pretty good job of holding onto her seat. Ohio, Mike DeWine, going further, plus 19 for the Republicans. You see, this is where I'm starting to get wary about where they're projecting these races. You know, the Republicans are probably going to get uh, pretty much guaranteed victories in these states. Now, is it really going to be by that much? And I think it's something that we have to think about moving forward. Now, the big states that a lot of people are going to you know, be asking about are these states in yellow. And then you could probably also add Michigan in there. Um, so let's just go from west to east and talk about some of those races. 
Nevada, they project a Democrat plus 1.6 victory. You know, I think that I'm actually a little bit wary of this. I mean, I think the Democrats could actually win by a little bit more because the the, the Republicans aren't really running the, you know, best candidates in these races. They could be running better candidates to possibly win those races. So, I mean, I kind of agree where they put this race. You know, as far as Arizona goes, I mean, Republican plus 1.3, that's more reasonable. It's going to be definitely a close race in Arizona. We, I, I made a video about this. If you guys haven't watched it, go check it out. Um, but, you know, overall, Arizona is going to be a state that it's going to be depending on a lot of different factors. Um, how it stands right now, the Republicans are at a higher, um, you know, chance of winning here, uh, b based on current statewide politics. If this was a nationwide race and they're running in Arizona, I would bet my top dollar that right now the, um, the Democrats would be winning in Arizona. However, statewide politics does have an impact in races and we, we can't forget that. We have to remember that the, the governor's mansions they're really not about, oh, you are going to be campaigning nationwide and have to appeal to all of these people, but more of a thing that, you know, these candidates are able to um, appeal to their voters, appeal to, the, you know, the people that elect them. And to a certain extent, that really helps out getting some of these, uh, you know, weird governorships. Like we have the Northeast pretty red because they have popular candidates who were able to win campaigns even across party lines and states electricity with the other party. So I think that's one of the big things about gubernatorial races. And, you know, what I find, you know, a little bit shocking about this forecast is these two states, Pennsylvania and Kansas. So, I mean, Kansas, not so much. I mean, I, I, I've always expected Laura Kelly to somewhat lose um, just because of, you know, her positioning um, you know, coming in, she's a Democrat in Kansas. I mean, it's not impossible because she could certainly win re-election based on the things she's been able to do in Congress in, well, in, the, in the state house. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a Republican state. And, you know, like I say, Republican state is Republican state. So it's going to end up going Republican more likely than not. Pennsylvania. This was, like I said, the biggest shock I had. Um, they project the Republicans to win by three. This is shocking in my head i think this race is going to be decided by less than one and a half percent and i would say more likely than not it leans towards the democrats and you know i think this is one of the places the forecast might be wrong going on to some other important races um wisconsin this projects tony evers very narrowly holding on i mean i kind of agree with that and the big race that a lot of people are, are asking themselves about georgia if Stacey Abrams zones for governor in Georgia, you can probably say that this state is completely in jeopardy for the GOP. And even without um, Stacey Abrams, it's still in jeopardy. This forecast has Michael uh, Ryan, uh, Brian Kemp, right? Brian Kemp up by four and a half percent. So I really think that it's going to be an interesting state that um, to see. I mean, with the state of Georgia, we have to think about African American turnout. How well will African Americans? do um for the democrats and if they come out we can see this race getting a lot lot closer so this is the current map they have for that forecast now um you know this is like your your you know your your categories for the states is how they um i guess they categorize them you know safely until likely and this is more on a chance base we also have to remember um the big percentages when you saw for example 30 to uh 30 to 70 it's not that the democrats are going to get 70 and the republicans are going to get 30 it's a chance so three out of every 10 scenarios the republican wins and you also have to remember the way they run these forecasts is that they run simulations based on data that we do have and after that they just you know average out how many results you got so i think that's interesting now i want to take a look at some of these races we're seeing some big changes in these races you know with michigan we're seeing it go further to the left and Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, going a little bit more to the right. So what does this tell us? One of the big things I think this tells us is that for most of these states, there's going to be really few extremely close states. And if they were close, they're going to end up being, you know, states that were close in the past. Now, you know, states that were going by five, six, seven, eight percent in the past, those states are going to continue to be more polarized the results are going to be more partisan you why because the, the 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 current party system that we have in the united states influences that so and again you also have some popular incumbents in there so you can't forget that um so another thing i wanted to i wanted to talk about is this 
um the biggest gains and biggest for for both parties we see the the democrats having relatively small gains with about one and a half percent in illinois colorado nevada um texas and minnesota this is chance wise while we see them skyrocket in places like vermont new hampshire massachusetts now one thing i do want to pre preface that in new hampshire if the republicans want to win this chris Nunu cannot run for uh for senate now i think for the long term it's more important for them to run chris Nunu for senate but they're gonna have to probably give up their um their um seat um yeah so this is actually another interesting tool of this forecast we see how they give us the um choose your state so we see some races for example, this Virginia gubernatorial race, which will happen this November, actually, Terry McAuliffe is expected to win by 8.8. .8. You know, that's interesting considering that we have some recent polls that show the race actually being a lot closer. You can take a look at a lot of these states. Florida, Ron DeSantis expected to win by 9.3. Um, let's take a look at Georgia. In Georgia, Brian Kemp plus 4.5. You see, a lot of this um, data really tells us that there is a possibility for the Democrats to win in certain states, but yet again, the Republicans are just at a stronger point of view. You know, when when you look at this list of top five races, you might be asking yourself, "Well, how is this shocking?" Well, you know, I think that one of the things that I, I that I think is really important coming into twenty twenty two is the current position of the Democratic Party. You know, we also have to think that Biden Biden's fatigue as president will certainly have something to do with what happens in the midterm elections. And I think at some gubernatorial levels, we're going to see those um, those impacts. And I think this forecast just perfectly um, shows that. So this is the final, um, I guess, the thing you can take a look at, the, the top five races. And tell me what you guys think these where these five, top five races will end up going. I think they're going to be very close, but ultimately there's going to have to be a winner. So um, this is it for this video, and I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll see you in the next time, and goodbye!